Hi guys, it's Paul from Unsung Angler and welcome to another episode of Utility Flies. Today I'll be tying a woolly bugger variation that I really think you're going to enjoy, so stick around and check it out. If this is your first time tuning in and you enjoyed this video, please click the like button below. And if you're not already subscribed, please go ahead and click the subscribe button. Thanks. We are going to be using a J Stockard hook that I found these a few years ago. They are the Bass Fly Model 607. What I like about this hook is it's it's like the carbon steel equivalent of like a Tiemco 811S, a saltwater hook. It's a straight eye 1X strong hook. I really like it for this style fly. So we'll get our thread on. Take it to the bend. So at this point we're going to stop a little back and we are going to add a red dumbbell eye. What I like to always think about is put it back further than you think you need to put it back. We'll cut that out. Try to get it centered on there and then crisscross your wraps. So once you get a handful of wraps crisscrossed, just go around the dumbbell eyes. What this will do is kind of pull all that thread in and really tighten that, tighten that dumbbell eye down on the hook. So what I'll do is look from the side, make sure we're all squared up there. That looks good. Take your thread back and anytime I throw a dumbbell eye on I always, always, always put a little bit of zappa gap on it. make sure that stays in place so we'll let that dry for a second so next for the tail standard woolly bugger pattern calls for you know just marabou what I like to use is some blood quills what I'll do with these is try to stroke them back and pull off half the fibers from the blood quill get it lined up. So this tail will make a little longer than a typical woolly bugger tail because I'm using a shorter shanked hook than like say a 3x long streamer hook. So I'll go a little more than one time the shank length. So what I like to do here, figure out where you want to tie in. Cut off. tie in and take it back. So that's a little on the anorexic side. So what I'll typically do is do this step twice. Now I'll go back to that same blood quill and I'll strip off the other side. The neat thing with this is if you're tying something maybe other than black, like olive, I'll tie a lot of olive flies in this pattern and you can put a different color on the bottom maybe to simulate like a belly of a uh, like a sculpin or something like that that you're trying to imitate where you fish. Another clump. Get those tight in. This also helps build a body on the fly. So I want this thin. I don't want a big thick tail on this fly because I want the fly up here to resemble the head of like a sculpin and then have it have it taper down as it goes through the fly. So the other thing I do a little differently is I'll use schlop and hackle uh, to palmer this. So I'll take a schlop and stroke it backwards. 
snip off the end and tie this in at the bend. So once I have my schloppen tied in, I will take medium ultra chenille. And again, I'll tie this in all the way up. This, you know, some of the thicker stuff you can pull it off, but for whatever, this is um, Wopsy Fly medium ultra chenille, and I can't get it. Usually you can get down to the white fibers and the that hold it all together, but this one I can't seem to do it. So what I'll do is just tie this up behind my dumbbell eyes. Just so I have, I, I don't want a, a big bump in my fly. So take that up, stop it right behind the eyes. Now I will advance my chenille. And right behind the eyes, I'll tie off. my excess. Make sure all my tail fibers are clear and I try to keep the good side of my schloppen. Oh, don't hit the camera. And I will advance this. Come on. I will palmer. the chenille. Trying to make sure that all none of this gets caught up in there. Once I get behind the eye of the hook I'll tie off. I'll pull all the fibers back and throw a couple good wraps on there lock everything down. So next I'll take a brush. Um, you can use a toothbrush, anything like that. Just kind of brush your fibers out. So this is looking a little more wild than a traditional bugger. So one thing when I first started kind of tweaking this pattern, um, I used like ram's wool for the head kind of tough to deal with and recently I switched over to using uh, hairline laser dubbing and I'll throw a dubbing loop on and it just makes a nice fly so I'll make a loop in my head and there's a couple different tools you can use to to work with a dubbing loop there's a shepherd's hook, and then also Loon makes this nice weighted. We'll use this one. So once I have my loop made, I'll lock that in and let it hang below. So one thing that's real important to do when you do get your laser dubbing, you know, pull a pretty good sized clump out. Don't go too crazy. The important thing you have to do with this, once you have it, if you just put this in the loop, it's all kind of twisted together. So what you need to do is keep stroking this out, setting it over it, pulling it apart, pull it apart, pull it apart, pull it apart. And what that's doing is, you might be able to see it here, it's aligning all the fibers in one direction. So once we get all those lined up, we'll drop them into our dubbing loop, hold it down, spread them out, so you need to be careful because sometimes your dubbing will grab into your fly. So once we get all that tied in, we'll just give that a spin. So I don't go too nuts right yet. Let it twist up a little bit. Take your brush. Pull some of them fibers out. Okay. Give it another twist. Once you get it kind of good and twisted, you can really go through and work it with your brush. Okay, you want it? There we go. So that's looking pretty good. So once we get here, we're going to stroke all our fibers back toward the back 
of the fly and we'll start wrapping our dubbing loop around a couple wraps behind till we start getting into the loop and then we'll start crisscrossing over back over and then I'll come under constantly stroking those fibers back and then once we get here we're gonna tie off if there's a little bit left over that's fine tie off now we'll cut our dubbing loop and at this point we'll just build a head two whip finishes and we're done so to clean this up our brush and brush this back. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed, please click the subscribe button as we have a lot more coming up in the future. Thanks again for watching.